years since a teen gunman opened fire inside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland. And just minutes from now, opening statements will begin in the penalty phase in the trial of the convicted shooter, Nicholas Cruz. Yeah, Cruz pleaded guilty last October to killing 14 students and three staff members in the 2018 massacre. Well, now jury members will decide whether Cruz will get the death penalty for his heinous crimes. Local 10's Christina Vasquez joining us live this morning at the Fort Lauderdale courtroom with what we can expect today. Christina. And I can tell you, it was just in the courtroom a short time ago. I can say that I've already seen several family members of some of these Parkland shooting victims. You know, for them, this has been a long time coming. Today marks four years, five months, and four days since Nicholas Cruz, then 19, took an Uber to Marjorie Sonam Douglas High School, armed with an AR-style rifle, and shot and killed 17 MSD students and staff and hurt another 17. It was his guilty pleas in October to the 17 murders that set up this penalty phase that we are in right now. That started with jury selection in April. 12 jurors and 10 alternates, if you recall, they were selected and sworn in on June 29th. And here we are on opening statements. Legal analysts say today is one of the most significant moments in this process because this is when now that newly sworn jury panel, the community, family members of the victims, they will hear both sides present an overview of the case they will present over the next four months. For many family members of Parkland school shooting victims, like Manuel Oliver, father of murder victim Joaquin. Every day it's, it's a new day that we suffer and, and we don't see a final chapter. The start of the Parkland shooters trial marked the beginning of that final chapter. There is an active shooter working at Douglas. Multiple gunshots are being fired. More than four years ago, Valentine's Day 2018, Nicholas Cruz, a troubled former Marjorie Stoneham Douglas student, shot and killed 17 MSD students and staff, hurt another 17. Guilty. His October guilty pleas to the murders, setting up the penalty phase of his trial, which started with jury selection in April. As the court worked to find people who could put any personal opinions aside, be fair and impartial when it comes to sentencing. You have been selected and sworn as the jury. The court swearing in a 12 member jury last month, seven men and five women who will decide if the shooter should pay for the crimes with his life. Paragraph Opening statements are scheduled video. for Monday to present the overview of what they want the jurors to consider. Legal analyst David Weinstein says expect prosecutors who are seeking a death verdict to stress the premeditated and heinous actions of the shooter. They will point out the planning that took place, both in items recovered from Cruz, from statements he made afterwards. Some of it will be very graphic in nature. As for the defense. Harp on his mental condition. He expects the defense will approach aspects of the shooter's childhood and background. The age of the defendant, the fact that he was under, in their mind, duress. Evidence they believe would provide a reason for a juror to vote for life. Monday presents one of the most significant days in the course of this process. And something really important to note, not only was the Parkland school shooting one of the deadliest, worst school shootings in U.S. history, uh, but the other reason why this trial is so unique is because not many mass shooter incidents get to trial. So this jury is in a very unique position. They're coming in right on the penalty phase where they're making this decision about life and death, and they're one of the few jurors in our country's history that have ever had the opportunity to listen to this evidence, carefully weigh it, and make that decision. I was going through some FBI active shooter incidents information, and that's where I discovered you know, most mass shooters to this scale, they either die by suicide or killed by police. Rarely do they make it to trial. So this is a very unprecedented, unique experience that these jurors and our community is going to be going through starting today. Back to you. Well, Christina, there's so much evidence that these jurors are going to be looking at over the course of the next several months. What are they going to be seeing and watching in this process? That is such a great question. I'm glad you asked it because most folks are familiar with the guilty, innocent style of a trial, right? But in this case, again, guilt was already established when he pled to those 17 murders in October. So we're walking right into what's called the penalty phase. The evidence being presented during this stage is going to sound and maybe look a little different than most people realize. So there's some key terms that you're going to hear if you're watching into our live streaming on our digital platforms. That's important to know. 
show, you're going to hear the state talk about something called aggravating factors. That is by state statute. Aggravating factors, think of those as things or evidence that they want the jurors to view that they feel would compel them to vote for death. So by statute, these are legal terms, will be evidence that, that it was premeditated, cold and calculated. You're going to hear evidence related to being heinous and atrocious. Now, that is where it's, I have to be candid, it's going to be difficult for the jurors in this case because some of that material to make that case is going to be grisly and harrowing. We are talking about um, you know, crime scene photos. These are photos, by the way, that we, the media who we work with you, right, to be a liaison, we are not allowed to publish or broadcast them. Reporters will be allowed at the end of sensitive data days to view it, and I'll be able to articulate it with you, but that gives you a sense of what these jurors are going to view. Now, when they unanimously find that an aggravating factor exists, that is the moment where they're allowed to then consider the defense's uh, evidence. And that's an important term too. So it's called mitigating circumstances. What does that mean? Essentially, it's evidence that they think will compel a juror to vote for life. So some of the mitigating circumstances that they are presented, uh, expected to present will be evidence about his age at the time of the incident, about his background in childhood. I've been attending all the pretrial hearings for this case for months, and I can tell you that I've already heard the defense tell Telegraph that they'll be ha having experts speaking to intellectual, developmental disabilities, perhaps um, the history of behavioral issues. And so essentially what happens is when they get, you have the state case, you have the defense case, and then it goes to jury deliberations. And so when in a penalty phase, what this jury is looking at is weighing it. As the court explained to them, they're going to be weighing these things, the aggravating factors and that evidence to consider versus what they heard from the defense about those mitigating circumstances. And at the end of the day, and that way, each individual juror will make, it, make a decision. If they feel like there's more aggravating factors and mitigating circumstances, that's a vote for death. Conversely, mitigating over aggravating, that would be a vote for life. And what's so important here is that they have to be unanimous in choosing death. So that means for the defense, if you're looking at it from their perspective, all they have to do is convince one juror that the evidence they presented should compel them that life in prison without parole is the appropriate sentence and he will get life. Back to you. All right, and quickly, Christina, we have another question before you go. With this case stretching out now for years, how long is this penalty phase expected to last? At last check with the judge, it's expected to last uh, four to five months. So we'll see how it goes as it gets underway. Important to note that actually the defense um, just filed a motion for continuance saying that one of its chief experts that they had that they said is crucial to their case, that a doctor uh, recommended that she pull back from forensic trial service because of a serious medical condition. So they're asking now for the court for a 45 day delay after the state finishes its case before they start their case. Um, so we don't yet know what the judge will rule on that, but if she grants it, now everything I just said could change, right? And instead of four to five months, maybe it could be a little longer. We'll have to see. All right, thank you, Christina. And again, we'll have special coverage throughout the day as the trial begins. We'll be streaming gavel to gavel coverage on our digital platforms, including on our website, local10.com, our Facebook page and YouTube channel as well.